Well, I have a challenge for you. Since this is a Christian Toastmasters Club, and Christians always talk about this word, the gospel, my challenge is that you find a Christian sometime tonight or this week or sometime and ask them, what is the gospel? And then ask them how that has affected your life. It's actually not that easy of a question, but that's a challenge that I'm working on trying to share with you tonight. And there are four parts, related to four parts of times in my life, when I was young, later when I had passion, later when I was cynical, and later when I found hope in the gospel. So I was young once and uh, grew up going to church and I heard there that the gospel was summarized in this verse, John 3.16. Anybody know it? How does it go? God so loved the world that he gave his own son that whoever believes in him shall not perish ever Right. So, I thought, okay, if I say I believe in Jesus, when I die, I won't really die. I'll go to heaven and I'll play a harp on a cloud forever. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it wasn't really relevant to me as a kid. That's kind of what I thought. But church was kind of nice, and so I went. Later, when I was about 18, I moved to a small town called Cali uh, Susanville, California to study forestry. Mm. I didn't like people. I wanted to work with trees. <laughs> but I did go to a Bible study, and in fact, I was forced to lead the Bible study one night with a group of men, and I realized in this Bible study that I was leading, I didn't know what the gospel re really was. And it was embarrassing, it was humbling humiliating, and I cried, and I, but then I also had a desire to want to know. And, I, and I, one of the first things I discovered, it's not just about eternal life playing harps on clouds, but it's about abundant life, about living well. Well, I figured one of the first things that I became interested in after this was people <laughs> and, and culture, and so if the gospel is true, if it is good news, that's what gospel literally means, it must be equally true in all cultures, not just America. So, I went to Mexico, <laughs> and I spent some time there, and I lived over a year in Mexico, and I met some incredible and motivating, inspiring Christian people who were poor, who were not so poor, all kinds of people. And uh, later, also because of my passion for trying to figure this out, I became a, a, a teacher in the language center of my university, and there were a lot of students there from Taiwan, and I ended up coming to Taiwan. And so because of the gospel, that's why I became a language teacher, and later an English professor. Because of the gospel, that's how I met my wife, and why I'm still married to her, is because of the gospel. It had a real, actual influence on my life. But as time went on, I became a little bit frustrated because I saw a lot of people who were Christians or said they were Christians and they weren't acting like what I thought Christians should act like. And in fact, almost everybody that I met at first, they maybe were a great example, but as I got to know them, I saw flaws and problems with their life. As I read the Bible, I found a lot of things in the Bible I didn't like. <laughs> and I became kind of defensive, and I became kind of cynical. And I said, what, well, you know, the gospel, good news? Look at all these people. Why, is, why are Christians in Taiwan known more for being against homosexuals than being loving people. Is that the gospel? <laughs> so I became quite cynical. But then I went to the best Bible study I've ever been to. It's when I became a PhD student. I went back to school in the United States with my wife and two young children. And I had a class 
called Moses, Midrash, and Masochism, huh? taught by an atheist, horrible man, and it was fantastic. Because in this class, I had no obligations to my faith. I didn't need to defend anything. I could be completely honest. And it was fun. It was really interesting. And I found that the Bible is not just to this religious text, but it's actually incredibly inspiring and interesting. It's good literature. It's audacious. It's infuriating. And later, now, actually, I, I, I teach the Bible as literature as a professor at Sucho University. And it's fun because I get to learn about the gospel from my students. They give me all kinds of inspiring ideas. So now, instead of the gospel being something that I need to tell others they need to believe, the gospel for me is finding out from other people, whether they're Christians or not Christians, exploring together and finding out what is this abundant life. That is the gospel to me. Toastmaster of the evening.